Good morning. I'm Leonard Hamlin, Canon Missioner of the Washington National Cathedral. And it's my pleasure to meet you for this morning's devotion and prayer on this Thursday, December 30th, 2021. I invite you to join me as I welcome you on behalf of our Dean as well as the Bishop as we gather together and moving toward the close of a wonderful but challenging year. And so I invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, it is once again that we come before you, being grateful for the days that we can see behind us. We come in anticipation of the days that are in front of us, but thank you for the present that you have given us. We ask now that we might be mindful of your faithfulness as we seek to be faithful in our relationship with you. So on this Thursday, we ask that you would bless us, hold us, and that you would fill us, that we might be prepared for all of the places that you will send us on this day and every day forward. This we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus, amen. I invite you to join me this morning as our reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, the 36th through the 40th verses. And in Luke's Gospel, we hear these words. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and favor, and the favor of God was upon him. Amen. This passage that appears early in Luke's gospel raises an important aspect in our relationship with God. It appears very early in Luke, but perhaps it's very easy to read quickly and uh, to skip over the mention of Anna. Many points can easily be missed if we read only to get to the end or have knowledge of the words. Early in Luke's gospel, we meet with only a brief mention, a prophet by the name of Anna. We are told some details about her. We are told that she was the daughter of Phanuel. She was associated with the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and she was also a widow. We are even given the detail of her age, that she was 84. She stayed at the temple and was there fasting and praying day and night. What a witness Anna must have been. What should not be overlooked is Anna's great faith. Certainly in the days that we find ourselves in now, as we look around at the world around us, we need to pay attention and to look at Anna, who only had this brief mention, but to realize she was a witness of great faith. It says day and night she came to the temple praying and fasting. Day and night she was there with her face before God. 
Certainly as we look at Anna and pay attention to perhaps the time that she was living in, Anna had challenges. First of all, just to be a woman in that culture, in that society, you were not given, of course, automatic privileges and authority and power as certain men would have been. And so she had to deal with that challenge. And certainly as a widow, she was only married a few years and then lost her husband. I can only imagine what the years must have been like beyond her husband's passing. That here, as a widow, she would not have automatically held a prominent place in the culture and society, but her faith has her with a witness that is captured in the biblical record and now has touched our lives even today. I make note of the fact that as her life is, and her name is captured in the biblical record, she's not in the record because of her wealth. She's not in the record because of her position and title. She's not in the record because that she has done something just would be called miraculous in a moment. She's in the record simply because of her faith. And it is her faith that has touched generation to generation to generation. Many of us are living our lives as we look forward perhaps to closing out one year and beginning the next. We look forward to touching the generations by wealth, by authority, by position, by power, by achieving things that will be touched and talked about by crowds. But I remind us this morning that if we want to have and make a difference in this world, in our families, in our communities, from generation to generation, one powerful way to do that is by walking with great faith. There are many wondering what tomorrow will bring. And it'll be the witness of great faith that can set those who are around and those who may be coming on the path to even greater success. We are called on this day to have great faith. Here, I cannot tell you how as Anna showed up to the temple, Jesus as a child and his parents showed up at the temple at the same time. If you wanted to put it together, you probably could not orchestrate it that well. But here, her faith put her in the right place at the right time to perhaps see for herself what she had been praying for for a long time. There is nothing like seeing an answered prayer. And so from that moment, she started to lift her voice and tell the world about this child that would help to redeem those who were looking to be redeemed. And on this day, I pray that we're telling the world about Jesus as we look forward and moving into the days to come, that we're telling the story in a way that it will challenge what everybody may be talking about, praying about, thinking about, but knowing that Jesus makes a difference in all of our lives. Remember, Anna only had a few lines, few verses, but her witness has been one that has helped many to see that God has not forgotten about us, but sent his only son that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And so as we look to the days that are ahead of us, may we be mindful that God is with us. Amen. When we have these moments, it is always a joy to be able to invite you to join me in that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. That we pray on this morning, 
as we're so grateful for each and every morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, but forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we go about this day and every day, I'm thankful for Anna's witness. And may your witness not just be something that you keep to yourself, but a witness that helps others to see that God is with us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>